Hello. Now, when <clears throat> the early years of World War I were still seen as a bit of an adventure and a jolly jab to go over there and fight the Hun before the true horrors were known, a lot of um, influential posh people came up with various voluntary schemes and ideas. One of the items, for example, was uh, Lord Lonsdale, or Earl Lonsdale, came up with the idea of forming his own regiment, the 11th Battalion, the Border Regiment. And there were other schemes just like that. One of the schemes that was uh, dreamed up was a thing by the 17th Earl of Derby. It was called the Derby Scheme, introduced in 1915. Um, it was a thing where civilians could put their name down on paper to volunteer to go abroad and fight the Hun. But when they volunteered, they weren't immediately sent out to the front. They volunteered, put the name down on the list, and when the time came, the 17th Earl of Derby went, right, it's time for you to go, you've put your name down, away you go to fight the Germans in France. Now, it seemed a good idea at the time, but of the 215,000 people who volunteered for the scheme, when the time came for them to go to France, by the time they found out the true horrors of what was going on over there, of the 215,000 people that volunteered, very few of them actually went to France. Now, when the guys put the name down, the 17th Earl of Derby gave them the Derby Scheme armband, which is a khaki cloth armband with a separate red felt crown stitched to it. Um, as far as I'm aware, but somebody will prove me wrong, as yet, these are not being reproduced, okay? Now, presumably, of all the 215,000 people who put the name down, presumably, they all got one. They never left this country because what, what happened was, when the guys volunteered, they were still in civilian clothes, they had no uniforms, and when they were walking about on the streets of Britain in 1915, so they wouldn't be branded as shirkers and not doing the bit, they wore this on the civilian clothes. So it's an armband that never actually left this country. And of course, when they were called up, they got the uniform, stitched the armband, went abroad. That was the idea. But it was proved completely unsuccessful. And the scheme only ran in the year 1915. By 1916, such ideas that were dreamed up by posh people were killed off by the Compulsory Conscription Act of 1916. And that kind of killed off all these sort of private ventures and plans and schemes. Nice armband. A lot of them turn up today, they're not worth a fortune, realistically they're worth £20 a piece. Unfortunately, because of this anniversary, I've seen them priced as much as £70. They come in varying conditions from severely moth tracked, and you will find them, the moths absolutely love this type of khaki cloth, and they go through it like nobody's business. You'll get them in severely moth tracked condition, to mint unissued condition, and usually, they have two little buttons at the back. It's a kind of flat arm band and you button it up when you put it on your arm. Um, usually you find them without the buttons attached. Usually you find they've never had buttons on them. They've never been issued. But all of them will have the same interior. And this is what I mean by, as far as I'm aware, nobody's faking them. All genuine ones should be like this. You have the kind of reverse image of the crown where it's been stitched on. You have an issue number. Now only 215,000 people volunteered, but I don't know what the actual meaning of the issue number stamped into the back of these means, because the issue number is 112398 on this one. So they all should be issue numbered, but not that many people volunteered for the scheme. Also on the back of them, like in the the rim of a Brody helmet in the liner should always have a red stamp, Brody, etc. All of these genuine armbands, and I'm assuming that there isn't a fake one done yet, should have this blue or purple issued under authority of Army Council stamp. Now, nobody can reproduce that stamp, so I'm guessing that's why the repros haven't hit the market. But it's only a matter of time before somebody does them, so we'll take a look at a completely genuine example as i said this is one of the better condition ones i've had about six or seven over the years always trading them back out again because they're as common as anything 
picked this one up the other day for nine pound because somebody had incorrectly listed it as a World War II armband. You know when you do World War One on a keyboard, you do WW1. But the guy must have had fat finger syndrome, as we call it, because he must have pressed WW11. So it came up as a World War II armband and everybody missed it. So I got it for £9, which is the cheapest one that I've ever had. But as I said, they're not worth a fortune. Generally, realistically, you're looking at a sum that's worth about £20. But as I say, unfortunately, given this anniversary, I've seen them at the ridiculous price of up to £70. And they're certainly not worth that. But all of them, apart from the difference in the issue number inside, all genuine ones should be exactly like this one. There is absolutely no variation in details. You know how you get variations of the World War II German organization tot armband, and you get variations of various World War II German armbands. Well, this particular Derby scheme or Derby Council armband, it's called the Derby scheme, but sometimes you get them as Derby Council. All examples of this armband are like this. They're exactly like this. There's no variation in detail, cloth, or anything else apart from the difference in the obviously issue number they are all like this okay so we'll take a look at a genuine example anyway so we'll stick it down there and we'll have a look at it so this is the derby scheme armband now We'll just go through what it was about again. Now, the Derby Scheme was a voluntary recruitment policy in Britain created in 1915 by Edward Stanley, the 17th Earl of Derby. Now, Derby is a place in Britain. The concept behind the Derby Scheme was that men who voluntarily registered their name would be called upon for service only when necessary. Married men had an added incentive in that they would be advised they will be called upon only once the supply of single men was exhausted. Now the scheme was also referred to as the group system, as men were classified in groups according to the year of birth and marital status, and were to be called with the group when it was required. The scheme proved unsuccessful and it was abandoned in December 1915 and was superseded by the Military Service Act 1916, which introduced conscription. 215,000 men enlisted while the scheme was operational, but it's unknown how many of them actually went to the front line. So all the armbands are just like this. It's khaki cloth, same as uniform cloth. It's got this felt king's crown stitch to it. As you see, it's kind of, it's not, it's not a solid armband in the round as it were, like a slip-on armband. It's one that actually goes around the arm and it fastens by two buttons. So there you have the two buttons, sewn on, four holes for the buttons, sewn on. Sometimes the buttons have never been affixed, which means it's never been issued. The holes for the buttons, if we turn it over, well if you see, it's made of two pieces of cloth. You've got this khaki outer and this kind of linen inner, the way it's all stitched together, and the cloth, the, the crown rather, is stitched to the outer khaki, straight through the armband itself. And you've got the issue number of this particular armband. On all armbands, the number's obviously going to be different, but they should all have this issued under authority of Army Council. Sometimes, when the armband gets worn, the sweat and the crap off the guy's clothes makes all of this absolutely black. Okay, as, as you can see, it's got some black in among it. That's purely off the guy's clothes when it's been worn. And that's what you find. Sometimes you find these severely worn on the inside more than on the outside. But this is one of the better condition ones in that it doesn't have any moth damage. And I've seen them that's been moth tracked all the way up and down. The moths had a good chew through it. So, as I say, as I'm aware, as yet, as this video goes up to YouTube, I'm not aware of any reproductions on the market, but it's only a matter of time before they do come out. So, this is a genuine example of a Derby Scheme volunteers armband for British volunteers, 
and it only ran for one year, 1915, and it was killed off because it was unsuccessful, and the Conscription Act of 1916 put paid to all these schemes by these earls and lords and whatever else. But that's a genuine example anyway, what to look out for. And realistically, you pay £20 for them. So in the, in the present uh, centenary thing, don't be, you know, don't be conned into the hype of paying too much money for World War One items. Because a lot of people currently are paying far too much for items because of the centenary. So anyway, that's a genuine example of a Derby scheme or Derby Council armband.